Hello, this is Dear Shock. And I'm Evil Midget 38. And this is our second video in our plugin tutorial series. The first video we showed you how to download Eclipse, download the bucket jar, add it as a reference library to your project, add your package, and create your first class. So the first thing we're going to want to do with our new class is we want to add extends Java plugin. Plugin. Wow. Um, this is because um, we're a bucket plugin. All bucket plugins extend Java plugin. And then it also indicates that this is the main class of our plugin. This should be the only class that extends Java plugin. And then the second thing we do is we implement listener. So listener just indicates that this class is going to have event handlers in it. Event handlers simply listen for an event. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to add the onEnable method. And you need to make sure that you capitalize it just like this. And then this method right here will be called whenever the server starts. So from here, we are going to get the plugin manager for the server. Whoops. Plugin manager. There we go. We need to capitalize that correctly. And then I need to import that. And when I'm importing stuff, all I do is I hover over this and then I just click on import and that's all Nine there is to it. out of ten, if you have a declaration that's just where you have the class name and it's red, that just means you need to import it. Importing is necessary so that Java knows which class you're actually talking about because there could be 200 people who make a class called first plugin or 200 people who make a plugin manager each in a different package and then you need to know which um, plugin manager or which first plugin are we actually talking about and in this case we're talking about org bucket plugin plugin manager all right now we need to register this class as a listener so we're going to do pm plugin manager pm dot register events and then the first parameter is the listener class so in this case we're just going to do this because it's this class and the second one is the class that extends Java plugin, which is this. So this seems redundant right now, but when you start creating multiple class plugins with different classes as listeners, we'll uh, show you how to do it with multiple classes. All right, now we are going to do the event handler notation. So you need to do add event handler. This will tell the plugin that the method below this is an event. We also make sure to add ignore cancel equals true within parentheses after event handler. This isn't necessary, but what this does is it ignores any events that have been canceled. So if you've got like world guard on your server and someone tries to break a block in a protected region, world, world guard cancels the event and then we don't have to handle a canceled event. So now we're having our method declaration on block. So, and then block break event event. The first part on block break, that's just the name of the method. But yep, got it. Import. That's just the name of the method. And that can be called whatever you want. But please, please, please call it on block break the general or something relevant to the method. Um, a good standard used is on and then in the name of the event without the word event at the end. So for block break event, on block break entity damage event on entity damage. This just makes it super easy to see which method is doing what. Then the second part of the method declaration where it says block break event, that's just which event we're listening for. Whatever event you have there is whatever event is going to be um, whatever event you're listening for. Alright, so now within these brackets right here we will handle this event. So the first thing that we want to do on this event is get the player involved in the event. So we're going to do event.getPlayer and then we need to import the bucket player. Alright, now we are going to send the player a message. So we do player.send message and we're going to do chat color. So you do chat color dot and then it will show you all the different chat formats that you can use. In this case we're just going to do chat color dot gold. So this will send the message in gold. Yeah, and then you can do whatever message you want really. We're just going to do a simple you broke it and then add the um, type of the block to the end of it. So event dot get block dot get type. You could do all sorts of things with that. All right. So all that will do is this will just send you a message saying that you broke a, uh, and then whatever block it is, and that's all that we're going to do for that event.
So now we're going to repeat the entire process. Start by making another event handler annotation and then another method declaration. This one is going to be for on block place with a block place event. And then import the event. And then the same thing as before. Um, player is event.get player. Um, and then we're going to send him a message. You notice this time we don't have to import player because we already imported it before. So it's even faster this time. All right, and then that's all there is to the code. So this event right here will tell you what block you broke, and this event right here will tell you which block you placed. And, but we're not quite done. So we still need to add the plugin.yml file, and this is essential. This is what tells the server like what your uh, main class for your plugin is and everything. So we need to add plugin.yml and we recommend adding it in the project folder so it will end up appearing down here. So now what we need to do is we need to add the name of the plugin which is first plugin. We need to add the main class of the plugin. So this will be com.buckthat.first plugin. So we need to add the packaging and we need to make sure that's all in lowercase and then we need to add the main class so dot first plugin because this is the main class of our first plugin and then we need to add the version. Generally you start off with 1.0 or 0.1, whatever works for you. Um, we're just going to start off with 0.1 and that's all that needs to be added into this. So I'm going to save that, close it out, I'm going to refresh this so all the files are in sync and now we're going to create our jar file. So you right click on your project, you go to export and then it'll look like this. You need to click on Java, jar file, next, and then you need to uh, pick where you want to export it to, get rid of your project and your class path, but you really have to have your plugin.yml. If you don't export it with your plugin.yml, then the plugin will not work. So, all right, we're going to finish that. Then you will see the jar file shows up in my test server plugins folder. So my test server is right here. I'm going to start that. All right, and then you will see the plugin enable itself right there. So, all right, first plugin, enabling first plugin version 0.1. A lot of plugin tutorials teach you to do, um, to log the plugin starting up right here to tell the server that. Do not do that. Bucket has a built-in. So we will just do that. We'll join the server, and I will show you how this plugin works. So, all right, I will grab a piece of glass and place it. And then it just tells me you placed a glass and then you broke a log. And that's all there is to this plugin. Is it's extremely simple and it's very easy to make. It just shows you the basics. Um, one thing I recommend is do not upload this to Bucket Dev as a plugin. I see a lot of submissions off of just what plugin tutorials are and then people upload that. This is not your own code. So you are not allowed to upload code that is not your own to Bucket Dev. Even though it's very simple, um, just please create something original when you upload it. And that's all there is to this first tutorial. So thanks for watching.